let's discuss markup on cost. Two definitions to have while we're getting ready is open-ended credit, think credit cards, an account in which purchases can be made up to the credit limit, payments are made at least monthly, and if the entire balance is not paid in full, then a finance charge is added to the unpaid balance. That is what we're going to be calculating here in Chapter 12. We also have an average daily balance as a way of calculating a finance charge, and this is a method of calculating the finance charge that uses the average of the balances in the account at the end of each day. Let's get started. Find the finance charge for an unpaid balance of $758.23. In this case, the monthly interest rate is one and three fourths percent of the unpaid balance. So they're giving us the unpaid balance and we need to find one and three fourths percent. I know that three fourths is 0.75, so I'm gonna write this as 1.75%. And remember that per cent means per 100. So we can help find the decimal equivalent of 1.75% by writing 1.75 per as a fraction, 100. And we find that we get 0 0.0175 as the decimal equivalent of 1.75%. Now to find the finance charge. The finance charge is at decimal equivalent of 1 and 3 fourths percent, 0 0.0175 times the unpaid balance that they gave us. And when we multiply two, the two together, we get a finance charge of $13.27. Let's try that in question two. In question two, we have unpaid balance for the finance charge. This time the interest rate has changed to 1.5% of the unpaid balance. Let me write 1.5% and change that to 1.5 per 100. And as a decimal, that would be equivalent to 0 0.015. Let's go across October and then we'll work across November. So the unpaid balance at the beginning of the month is $325.28. And then we're gonna calculate the finance charge. So let's calculate the October finance charge by taking the unpaid balance at the beginning times that decimal equivalent, 0 0.015, and I get a finance charge of $4.88. That goes in that first blank. Then when we make purchases with our credit card, we're gonna add purchases, and we're gonna subtract anything that was returned, because that's money that um, gets deducted from what you owe. And then we're also going to subtract any payments that are made. Again, you're lowering the balance of your credit card. So we're going to take the previous balance of $325.28, add the finance charge of $4.88, add our purchases, subtract any returns, and subtract any payments. And at the end of the month of October, I have an unpaid balance of $404.04. That's where we end October, and that's also where we start November, $404.04. So think October 31st, right into the next day, November 1st. Find our finance charge. So this is the November finance charge. We're gonna take that November unpaid balance at the start of November, times our decimal equivalent, and I get a finance charge of $6.06. .06. We're gonna go the same way across. We're gonna take the unpaid balance, add our finance charge, add our purchases, subtract anything that was returned to the stores, and also subtract any payments that were made, and we get a new unpaid balance at the end of November, of $207.35. Remember, this is the end of November, and this one was the end of October. Let's take a look at question three. Question three says, find the finance charge with an average daily balance. So now we're talking an average daily balance of $1,122.38. 
with a revolving charge account, that means you can charge and um, make payments at any time, if the monthly interest rate is 1.75% of the average daily balance. Well, the of means multiply, and we're gonna take that 1.75% and change it into its decimal equivalent per 100, and we get 0 0.0175 as its decimal equivalent. So that 1.75% is the 0 0.0175 as a decimal. Of means multiply, and we're gonna multiply by the average daily balance which they gave us in this question. And when we multiply them together, I get $19.64. And that's our finance charge. Let's take a look at question three, or excuse me, question four. Alfie used a credit card to pay for tuition expenses while in college and now owes $5,232.25. The interest charges are 1.75% per month on unpaid balance. So again, we would take that 1.75% and change it to 1.75 per 100, which is our 0 0.0175. So to find the interest charges is another way to say find the finance charges. Just a different word for the same calculation. So we're going to take that 0 0.0175 times the unpaid balance, and that was the unpaid balance they gave us here at the beginning. And when I multiply, I get $91.56. In part B, it says, well, what if we took that same unpaid balance and moved it to a credit card that charges 0.8% per month of unpaid balance? So 0.8% is 0 0.8 per 100, and there's a lot of zeros here, so pay attention. It would be 0 0.008 as a decimal. And now let's take that 0 0.008 times the unpaid balance that we used back here in question four. And multiplying, we get $41.86. So comparing credit cards in part C, it says, how much would you save if you moved to this new credit card? Well, to find out how much we save, we're gonna subtract the two different finance charges. And in subtracting, I have a total of $49.70 that is saved. Let's take a look at one more question. Question number five. Question five, find the average daily balance. Now we're gonna calculate the average daily balance and calculate the finance charge and calculate the new balance for an account with the transactions below. The interest rate is 2% per month of the average daily balance. Let's change 2% into its decimal equivalent right now. And we get 0 0.02. So then later when we need that for the finance charge, we already have it. Okay. Let's start with our information. The previous balance, so um, from the end of the previous month and the start of this new one was $312.78. And we're going to start our billing date on June 11th. So this billing date would go from June 11th through July 11th. So it's the bulk of June. I like to make a chart. And in my chart, I like to do the dates of the transactions. Okay. And I like to do the number of days in that time period. And then I like to look at what is the new balance at that time. And then here at the end, I like to have the sum of those dates. So let's get started. So the first transaction is we know on June 11th, we start out with $312.78 as our balance but we want to figure out how long does it stay that much on the balance. Well, our first transaction is on June 15th. So from June 11th to June 15th, 
which is 15 minus 11, four days, we keep the balance of $312.78. So you want to think of that as June 11th, June 12th, June 13th, and June 14th. Those are the four days. The 15th is when we're going to start the next transaction. Okay. So we find the sum of those four days by saying, well, for four days, the balance was $312.78. And so if I do the shortcut to multiply, I get a total of $1,251.12 for those four days. The next row says from June 15th to the next date, June 20th, is going to be five days. And let's talk about what happens there. Well, the balance was $312.78. But then on June 15th, which is the start of this category, we had a return, and a return is to subtract $106.45. So you're making your balance go down, and I get a total of $206.33 as the new balance of our credit card. And we keep that balance for five days. So for five days, keeping that balance, I have a total for those five days of $1,031.65. The next row is going to start on June 20th, and it's going to go to June 29th. So the 29th minus the 20th is nine days in this category. And we had a balance of $206.33. And let's see what happens on June 20th, because that's the start of this category. So the start of this category says we purchase a watch. So we're going to add $115.73 to our balance. So adding those two together, I get $322.06 as the new balance of the credit card for those nine days. And then we find the total for those nine days. So the total for those nine days, I get $2,898.54. The next row is going to start on June 29th. And the next date something happens is July 3rd. I find whenever you're crossing into two months, there's two ways you can calculate it. Okay. You can calculate it just counting the days, 29th, 30th in June, and then July 1st and 2nd. And remember, June 3rd actually goes into the next, excuse me, July 3rd goes into the next category. So this is just those four days. You could also calculate that you have the 29th and 30th, two days left at the end of June, and then you have the 1st and 2nd, the two days into July. So for those four days, we start with a balance of $322.06. And then on June 29th, we make a payment. So again, that's a subtraction, making our balance go down $115. And I get a new balance of $207.06. And we keep that balance for four days. And the total for those four days is $828.24. Now this last category is going to go from July 3rd to the end, and it really ends on the July 11th. But what's important here is to remember that we were mostly in the month of June, and we ended the month of June, so we should have 30 days total here. So if I go back and I calculate four days plus five days plus nine days plus four days, I've used 22 days so far. So if there's 30 days in the month and we've used 22, there's eight left in this category. And for those eight days, we have a car rental, so we're going to add $74.19 to our balance for a new balance of $281.25. And so for eight days at that balance, 
I have the sum of those eight days as $2,250 even. We're almost done finding the average daily balance. Now we're going to go back and take each of those sums. So we already totaled the 30 days for June. Now we're going to take the total of the balances for those 30 days and add them together. So add all of these circled balances and I get $8,000. $259.55. And again, that's the total for the whole month of June. So to find the average daily balance, we're going to take the total balance, $8,259.55, and divide it by the total days in that billing period, which was 30 and I get $275.32. And that's the average daily balance. That was this part A, the average daily balance of $275.32. To find the finance charge, part B, we're going to take the 2% times the average daily balance. Well, we found above that that 2% was 0.02, and we just calculated the average daily balance of $275.32. So our finance charge is going to be $5.51 for Part B. To calculate the new balance, okay, we can take this new balance here, 281.25, and add our finance charge. Or you could go back from the beginning and say that you had $312.78 on your credit card. You deducted $106.45. You added $115.73. You subtracted a $115 payment. And you added $74.19. And this is all purchases and payments. And then we're going to add the $5.51 for our finance charge. So putting all of this together on the credit card portion, that should give us our $281.25, which again, you could take from right here. But then we need to add our $5.51 for our finance charge. And we get our new balance. What we totally owe is $286.76. Now I know that question is kind of difficult and it's a lot of steps. So in the next video, I have one more example, okay? Very similar to finding the finance charge or finding that finance charge using the average daily balance.